All right, Kev, thanks so much. Your time now is 6.03 on this Thursday, and you may have felt it yesterday. The magnitude 5.8 earthquake that hit uh, around 10.40 yesterday morning in Lone Pine. Of course, uh, Lone Pine is about 150 miles away from Bakersfield, and a lot of us felt it here yesterday. And joining us to talk more about this timbler is local geologist Emily Fisher. Uh, Emily, thanks so much for joining us. I want to first begin with um, what this quake means for us in Kern County. Obviously, a lot of us felt it. It was a significant earthquake, and uh, although it just made a little uh, people kind of question whether or not they felt an earthquake, uh, can you kind of talk a little bit about uh, what this means for Kern County? Um, yes, Alex. So the um, it just means that we're kind, we're still in California and we're surrounded by uh, fault lines on all sides. So we're probably really familiar with the San Andreas Fault um, over to the west. It gets a lot more excitement, media attention. If you look up strike slip fault in the textbook, it's that one. Um, but over to our east, um, we also have the Eastern California shear zone. And a lot of the motion that used to be on the San Andreas is starting to move over that direction. So, um, yeah, we can expect that we're going to get more earthquakes of all sorts of different scales. Uh, most of them are small that are going to come from that eastern direction, um, like Ridgecrest from last year, along Lone Pine. That whole area is going to continue to have earthquakes occasionally. Um, that those waves are going to make it here for us to feel. Now, I think a lot of people, again, when they felt that earthquake, they immediately went back to what happened last year. Almost to the date, about 10 days short of the one-year anniversary from that 6.4 magnitude earthquake that we saw on July 4th of last year, uh, again, a lot of nerves that were kind of uh, brought back uh, from, from what we experienced last year. The earthquake that we experienced uh, with the Ridgecrest earthquakes, is there any relation to, to that with what we saw yesterday? They're, um, I wouldn't say that they're exactly related, and it's, a, it's an interesting coincidence that it's almost a, a year later because we can't don't have a lot of predictive nature to these, but they are part of the same system. If you look at where they happen on the map, the, the Ridgecrest earthquake kind of spanned out, and there's this nice big line um, that goes um, kind of northwest and southeast from Ridgecrest because we've had over way over a hundred thousand aftershocks that kind of from that one last year and they're still going today that span out so they have but sort of this limit to them and then you jump much further up it's still in the same fault system they're all kind of moving and related to one another um, but a little bit different in the segments and faults in reality are lots of little tiny pieces um, and not just one straight line. I want to ask about magnitude because moments after we felt the earthquake, we got the initial alert that it was a 6.1 magnitude earthquake and about 20 to 30 minutes later, it was downgraded to a 5.8 and that's where it stands as of now why, why does the magnitude change right it seems like you said this and then you say this um and i'll say it's coming from the usgs and the reason it changes is when we need earthquake data we need it really fast right it's coming um it's posted automatically um up to the up online within seconds of those earthquakes happening. Um, so as soon as one happens, I'm immediately on USGS looking at that thing before any um, seismologist or geologist gets to review it. They make the data available um, in case we need it. So it's automated. And the way that you tell the magnitude, if you've ever um, seen a picture of a seismograph, it has this baseline and then these like big spikes, right? Where those waves start coming in. It takes the baseline and that peak and says, what's the difference? And that's how it measures the magnitude. So a lot of times there's kind of noise in the data, um, noise in the data up here. It takes the min and the max and says, what's the magnitude based off those. So a lot of times once a scientist goes through and reviews the data, they'll filter out the noise and come up with a more accurate signal. And that's when we get the update that usually goes down. So I got to ask you really quick because, you know, again, we've experienced several earthquakes over the last year. Is it possible 
that all of these fairly large earthquakes that we've experienced over the last several months can trigger other faults in California, which means, you know, could we see even larger earthquakes, uh, you know, on the San Andreas Fault or other faults that surround us in Kern County? I know it's a big question. I know that's what we all wish we could answer and went to uh, seismologists working all the time. We still can't really predict um, faults with uh, when an earthquake is going to happen um, with any accuracy. Not all faults come to the surface, which makes it hard to see where they're going to be. Um, and uh, on a human time scale, give or take a few million years, maybe a few hundreds of years, we might be able to say you'd expect one here or there. But like, is it going to happen next Tuesday is not a scale that, um, that we can get to. But there is, um, uh, we right. can say um, that there's probably a, a lower likelihood, lower likelihood um, that we're going to get one soon. So the USGS said there's probably like a 5% chance that we're going to get a bigger earthquake than the 5.8 that we just had. Um, so expect more earthquakes. Be prepared for them. We know not cover and hold. But when we're going to get one, and if we can say if it's going to be bigger or smaller, we can't. we're not there yet. I think that's a good note to uh, end on right there is we need to understand where we live. We are in California. We experience earthquakes on a regular basis. Start preparing now, even though that there uh, is that 5% chance that a bigger one could happen. It's just it's just good to always be prepared. And I know our county officials are urging everyone to do that. So Emily Fisher, a local geologist, uh, thanks so much for kind of putting these earthquakes in context for us. And I'm sure we'll talk to you in the days to come. Thanks so much. Thank you.